Last time on Choose a Choice, the party was inside a donut. The donut was, it was an in office. battle mode. Yeah, it was an office building. The donut, donut was an office building. The office building was in battle mode. The battle was between Sienna's dad, who is now a giant robot, and the party. And the guards. And the, the pizza prisoners. party, actually, if you will. The pizza party, yes. Uh, long story short, you guys did a really good job of uh, disabling the giant robot dad and maintaining him still alive, uh, which was impressive. You changed the password to the prison cell doors uh, to require a non-passworded knife poking through a piece of pizza. <laughs> Uh, Janet was crushed by Mr. Bellingham, giant robot, falling over. Uh, and to maintain her security slash finish off the, the robot and make sure that it couldn't hurt you guys, Janet self-destructed with a thermite uh, charge that she had internal to her processing unit. Uh, Janet's last words, if I recall correctly, were find Misha and find Oberon. Yep. And so here you are in the middle, in the middle of the donut building, uh, in the middle of the floor of the photonid research unit, the guards have stopped shooting and are somehow respecting this cinematically quiet moment. Uh, the prisoners have made a break for it. I'm sorry, prisoners? No. The uh, test subjects slash volunteers <laughs> have made a break for it. Um, the scientists upstairs are kind of like looking out like kind of confused. They thought that this was just a really loud pizza party, but it turns out it's not in the testing labs. They're, they're poking their heads out and being like, what's going on. And you hear them muttering, uh, sketch is going through the wreckage of, of, uh, Janet's crushed frame. Um, quest Jenkins, I believe you're still upstairs. Sienna, you're, you're down there with, with sketch. And uh, that's that's where we're at right now. What do you do next? Well, I, for one, would like to lay there as a melted pile of scrap. Uh, okay, you do that. You don't even have to roll for that. Uh, what? Yes. You're playing favorites. Can I use a Benny to do that? On? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Sorry. Um, Sketch is still just looking. I, I know we kind of talked about it last episode, but he's trying to get Janet's personality chips out. Uh, hoping that maybe that will allow him to eventually restore Janet's consciousness to something. Um, I think I rolled for that last time and failed. Could I roll for that again? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Um, you're gonna you're gonna basically scramble through the pile trying to trying to find any piece of Janet that you can find that still looks like it's usable, right? Yeah. The four. Well, you, you find, you do find a few broken pieces of, uh, what you recognize as, as some of her personality chips, um, or cartridges as the case may be, but they're in pieces. So it doesn't seem super helpful, but you, you do find some, some pieces of them. Hey, um, wow. Yeah, I think Sketch is just 
he he can't accept that. He's gonna just keep trying to find anything salvageable, um, collect whatever broken pieces he can. Okay. Um, are there still like bad guys, guards trying to like shoot at us? Uh, nobody's shooting at you currently. Uh, the guards seem to have their hands full with the volunteers slash test subjects who have now stormed upstairs and are engaging in hand-to-hand -hand combat with the guards. Mm. Okay. Well, I think... Wait, where's um, Quest again? Quest Jenkins is upstairs by the password terminal. Okay. I'm actually... I'm, I'm watching the fight going down while trying to have a conversation with the password terminal. That's correct. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So is Quest seeing just... Janet? No. Shit. Okay. No, Quest doesn't know. I don't think. Um, I think Sienna's going to use this opportunity of confusion to try and get out of there. Um, I think she's seen she can't do very much for her dad right now. And not without any more help. And her team is kind of falling apart. So... I think she's going to go try and grab Sketch and just pull him away and just kind of try and shove him out of there. And then once she gets him, she's going to yell up to Quest to try and get out. So if I understand you correctly, you're going to you're going to leave Mr. Bellingham there in his acrylic uh, bulletproof glass pod. Um, I don't want to make light of my father's situation, but what am I going to do with a torso? <laughs> Uh, that's a very good question. I don't know what you're going to do with the torso. I just am verifying that that's what you're choosing to do. Yeah. Sienna knows she can't take care of whatever her dad is now. So she's just focused on grabbing Sketch and trying to get Quest to leave as well, because this is a good time to leave since there's a big skirmish. So she's going to try and grab Sketch. Hey, Sketch isn't going to resist, but he's also like a little bit despondent. Yeah, that's fine. I'm I'm bigger than him. I can pull him along. Um, I'm also gonna holler up to Quest. We need to go. Oh, okay. Um, password switch box. It's been great talking to you. I hope your relationship <laughs> with your dad gets better. I hope so too. I think this pizza will help. <laughs> and the knife. Issues. Surely. Uh, no. Well, actually, as long as the knife is stabbed into me with the pizza on it, you're technically continuously giving me the password and it's going to keep me up at night. If you could take that out before you go, that'd be, that'd be great. Okay. Just open yourself to me. I don't know the the pizza is in the password drawer that I'm keeping. You're just going to un, oh, you're just unstick take the, the knife. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I pull the knife out. Thanks. And good luck on whatever you do next. Th thank you. I, say, I mean, <clears throat> sorry, I'm the voice. Thank you. If you see my dad, tell him I miss him I, or something. I surely will if I see your, your dad. Um, I then... Is Sienna upstairs? She's still downstairs, downstairs right? Yeah. I'm, is there an exit downstairs or is it just prison cells? No. It's just prison cells downstairs. In okay. order to get out, you'll have to go upstairs and past uh, the research labs back okay. out the way you came. All right. And I'm dragging Quest along up the stairs now. Well, I'm not. Can't You're dragging that. Sketch along. Sketch. Right? Sorry. If you guys could just have different names. <laughs> We're like over a year into this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's too late to change them. Um. When when we reach the stairs, Sketch is going to start struggling and say, No, not yet. We got to get Oberon and Misha first. Sketch, no. In looking around at the different volunteers down here, you don't see any Adenians among the crowd. So uh, they don't seem like they're downstairs. Um, I'm going to ask one of the prisoners, just the closest person, going to grab them by the shoulders and say, 
Where do they keep the Adenians? Oh, uh, they're always up in the lab. They've they they brought them in and made a big deal. Oh, we got them Adenians, and they were using them to scare us, but they never brought them down. They they've always kept them up in the testing areas. You're talking about those research rooms, those labs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same place they built the Mister Bellingham guy up. They built him up there and then brought him down. Anyway, I gotta get back to punching this guard in the face, so uh, are you done talking to me? Yeah, good job punching the guard. Thanks, I'm just gonna keep doing it until somebody tells me to stop. He uh, he turns his back to you and just continues. Just It's like that scene from A Christmas Story. Oh, where he's just like wailing into him? Where Where Ralphie is just like wailing on the bully. Yeah, it's like that. Nice. Well, Sienna, you heard him. Let's go. What? We need to get out. Not without Oberon and Misha. Please. Fine. Then let's go now while everyone is distracted. We have to get Quest on our way, too. All right, you guys charge up the stairs. You pass by Quest Jenkins, who is pulling his knife out of the control panel. Uh, It is... It looks pretty greasy, and there is a piece of pizza that is sliding down the wall now that has a stab hole in it. Um, Seems kind of par for the course from what you know about Quest. Yeah, no further questions, Your Honor. No further questions? Ah. Yeah. Anyways, uh, where's where's Janet? Isn't she coming along? Sketch weeps openly uh janet's gone oh where'd she go she's uh she she's crumpled like a soda can yeah oh well you got her ai core out right i Uh, tried right this is all i got and i hold up the broken fragments of her personality chips uh, wh- I, I will, I quest sheds one single tear and then looks into the distance and says, we'll, we'll sprinkle her chips with the place she loved the most, the sewer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd like that. That would be nice. But first we've got to get. <laughs> We've got to get Oberon and Misha. Yes. Sketch is hell-bent on getting Oberon and Misha. Which... It was Janet's dying wish. What do we owe them, though? Um, Sketch is just going to go start trying to open lab doors. Uh, They're all open. Oh, Um, sweet. That'll be easy, then. The password panel uh, opened all the doors. Right. When when Quest Jenkins opened it. So they're all open. Uh, You can see into different kinds of labs. Uh, Some of them are working on, you know, large robotic limbs, um, presumably like different attachments for Mr. Bellingham, I guess. Um, Some of them have other kinds of facilities in there. Uh, You know, some of them look like chemical testing labs and, there's all kinds of there's all kinds of stuff up there. Yeah, I'm just doing like a quick look in each room, looking for Adenians. Or I imagine like Adenians would need different life support than humans would. So, any Adenians or signs of Adenians? Um, on the third or fourth room that you check, uh, you do see what looks like a giant aquarium tank, and you do see a couple of dark person-sized shapes in there, but it's unclear whether it's Adenians or just some vat of liquid with big chunk of something in it. I'm going to turn to Quest and Sienna and say, are Adenians like fish? Like if I tap on the glass, is that going to aggravate them? No, they're like people. I, well, I 
I don't know if I'd go that far. I mean, I mean, they are people, but I would surmise they, uh, you know, probably have ears that are more like a like a fish ear. Okay, well, given the choice between having someone tap on the glass and being turned into a robot, which do you think they'd prefer? That's fair. Thank you. I'm going to tap lightly on the glass. Uh, in this tank that you tapped on, um, you s- after you tap on the glass, the shape in the water kind of moves around a bit, and towards you drifts the... Uh, the face of Oberon. Okay, so is this... Just the face? Just the face, no body? Oh my goodness. No, it's his body too. <laughs> oh, good. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not... Oberon has not been beheaded. Ew. Um, is there like a lid on the tank? Is it like he can just swim up? Like, what's preventing him from getting out? What do we need to do to get him out, basically? Uh, it's not super obvious, but it looks like the whole tank is just, it was like manufactured and then sealed with the liquid and Oberon inside. So you're saying I have to shoot the aquarium? Oh, well, let's try something else first. Like what? Is there anything the size, shape, and density of a fire extinguisher in here? Well, there, uh, <laughs> come to mention it. There is something with exactly the size, shape, and density of a fire extinguisher in this they room. They have like is a, a fire, extinguisher? fire extinguisher shaped standard. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is a fire extinguisher standard. It is not an actual fire extinguisher. <laughs> Why they would have that in a lab, I don't know. It's the standard keep, is more useful. It's to keep units consistent. Come on. Yeah. When you want to measure something in number of fire extinguishers, you've got to have a standard. With exact precision. Uh-huh. 74.8 fire extinguishers long. Do they also have a bread box standard in there? Nope. Everything, they've gone away from the bread box standard, and it's only fire extinguisher standard. Uh, if Niop were here, she would just love this obscure unit of measure. But she's not here. I think you guys got to steal it. You got to take it with you when you leave. <laughs> yeah, we, we're definitely taking this with. Um, I'm going to pick it up and kind of gesture questioningly to Oberon. Like, is there any reason he sees that I shouldn't break the glass with the fire extinguisher standard? <laughs> uh, he, he like motions for you to come try. Actually, I've got a D4 in athletics. Anyone else want to... <laughs> I think my I think my random chance of being athletic is uh, maybe a little higher. Yeah, I've got I think I've just based on you know my workouts the past year. I've I have a six, I believe. Or the fact that you're an adult man and he's a teenage boy. Well, I think it's more of the mustache, but I don't think that has anything to do with it. Uh, Yena, have you forgotten? Uh, Quest Jenkins one verse one, the mustache makes the man. That's an that's an eight in in standard fire hydrant smashing glassing. <laughs> you you swing this fire extinguisher standard very hard, and your mother would be proud of how strong you you are. What a strong boy! Um, it rams into the glass and bounces off. Oh. And clatters to the floor. Oh, oh man, is it dented now? Because now it's not. If it's dented, we can't use it as a standard. The standard has not been dented. Oh, good. Okay, anyone see anything that looks like acid? Anyone want to find acid? Or I like pull out a... three stamps from my fanny pack. Not that kind of acid. <laughs> oh, no, like something to dissolve the glass. I don't. If it will. You know, but wouldn't it get in the water it? and like kill them? No, not if he stands far away from it. Is there like a discernible hatch somewhere, Alton? There is not a hatch that you can see. Although uh, I'd like you to roll notice as you look around the room. Can I do it too? Please. I take a Benny on that one. Uh, me too. There you go. 
Uh, that's a five for me. I got a three. Uh, Sienna, you see what looks like a tanning bed, and you just don't even suspect anything about it. Uh, Quest, okay. you see the tanning bed, and you're like, is that a treasure chest? <laughs> is that a treasure chest? No. What is it? Looks like a tanning bed. Well, yeah, but you've surely heard of tanning bed treasure chests. No. Are you going to open it or not? Well, I'm going to open it. I open it. It's you a mimic. Open it and <laughs> you open it, and uh, inside is the sleeping figure of what looks to be half a Denian, half machine. Oh, no. I smack it to wake it up. Uh, you slap it on the non-metal part of its face, I'm guessing? Yeah, the, the squishy wet part. <laughs> uh, Jared, what happens when, uh, when you get slapped by Quest Jenkins? Well... In case, for, for the audience, just to put this together explicitly, this is Misha that you're slapping. <laughs> and uh, Well, what's left of Misha, surely? Well, I mean, yeah, she's in the same condition when she that she was when she was captured, except that she's now in a tanning bed. It's um, not actually a tanning bed. It's a... It's a uh, sorry, she's it's now a, in a treasure chest. <laughs> no, it's like a specialized... <laughs> Oh. It's like a specialized uh, dream station. Oh. It is a treasure chest, and the treasure was the enemies to friends we made along the way. Wow. Yay! I think we can just wrap this episode here. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Um, so you go to slap Misha, and you succeed. A big old wet smack. <laughs> <laughs> which is swiftly followed by Misha's bionic arm extending rapidly towards your nether regions. I would like to roll damage, please. Or I guess roll a... Uh, roll, roll fighting. <laughs> roll fighting. Uh, quest, what is your parry? Uh, I think he's a semi-aquatic egg-laying mammal of action. <laughs> if I'm quest correct Jenkins. Perry um, it's a two it's pretty low uh, Janet or sorry Misha what did you roll that would be a five all right Misha roll damage I am going to petition to just make it a one because I'm not. Okay. As 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 Misha is becoming like this is an involuntary reflex, but as Misha is coming out of the dream station induced sleep, she is recognizing who's standing over her and, and pulls the punch to be a little bit uh maybe semi polite. Uh, you just got, uh, sack tap, Quest Jenkins. How do you feel? Um, pain. <laughs> I, I collapse to the floor. <laughs> this is one damage. It's not even... It's one damage <laughs> in a very sensitive area. Yeah, right. I mean, like, could I keep fighting? Yeah, I could, but... But it'll be from down here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right actually can i roll a fanny pack to see if fanny pack blocks it <laughs> yes. you wear it that if, low if you, you wear your fanny pack if you realistically <laughs> wearing, would wear your fanny pack a, that low a, i will allow it i'm just saying look i'm just if saying it's it's west jenkins canonically <laughs> has been wearing his fanny pack that low the entire time then or yes. worse you're wearing it under like a loincloth <laughs> I, <laughs> I feel like you would have gotten hit by I, it already. Look, I I adjust my fanny pack throughout the day. 
right? Nobody, nobody like doesn't adjust their backpack. You're, you know, I'm always like upsy downsy with my backpack. So too with the fanny pack. So at this point in time, we're just rolling to see where the fanny pack was. And might I note, we were in a high stress situation and we were also running, which for our male audience, you know what happens. You know what happens when you've been running and active. So your your fanny pack shifts downward. Your fanny pack shifts downward. Exactly. Just, Why? What does that guys? have to do with your gender at all? Um, Everybody's pants fall down when they're running and active. I just rolled. That's why I gave up running. I rolled an eleven. Pants fell down too much. Oh, I rolled an eleven for fanny pack. All right, yeah, I'll, I'll allow it. Your fanny pack manages to mostly mitigate the damage. But then wouldn't the act of hitting the fanny pack into his balls like just mean he gets hit in the balls by whatever's in his fanny pack? It'll uh, spread it out is, like a helmet. It spreads it out. It yeah. is spread out a little bit, so it still Sounds hurts. Like some of you guys have worn your fanny packs a little bit too low if you know this much about what it would do. But he's not, <laughs> but he's not destroyed. <laughs> And uh, the other thing that you need to keep in mind is that uh, even so, it still hurts his feelings more than it could ever hurt his person. It's true. I shed a second tear for the day. So Quest got his feelings hurt because someone slapped him back after he slapped them. Yeah, yeah. I was only trying to wake him up, though. That's the thing. It was Mine was a slap of kindness. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, um, Misha is sitting up and and looking around, and I'm imagining that she's... Uh, Alton, how long have I been in there, and what was the last thing that I saw? Uh, the last thing that you remember seeing was, Misha, um, you remember being gassed and dragged away uh, by photonid guards. And you have been asleep in the dream station bed the entire rest of the time on like a weird screensaver mode. Okay. So, I, but I wasn't being like tortured or interrogated to my knowledge. No, you were be being kept in, sp in stasis because, um, w well, I, I have a reason, but I don't know if it's in character to tell you that reason right now. Okay. Well, if Misha wouldn't know, then I shouldn't know, right? I I think Misha would be aware that she's had so much bionic modification that uh, she is at risk of having cyborg psychosis. Oh yeah. Okay. And yeah, we, one of her last that... one of her last memories uh, you know, during the fight with the photonic guards you know, after she was gassed, is losing control of her bionic limbs. Um, but she has no reason to believe that she actually has an active case of cyborg psychosis. But, you know, putting two and two together, it makes sense that they would want to keep her in stasis if they suspected that she had it. Okay. Okay. Uh, so... I'm I'm sitting up and I'm looking around and I'm breathing super hard and I go where am I? How did I get here? Uh I don't know and I don't know. Well, no, I know where we are. Wait, uh, you know yeah, jeez. Yeah, no, I know where we are. Sorry, sorry. It's been a stressful From the afternoon. Ground. <laughs> We're at the Fatana headquarters. I don't know how you got here. And why are you guys dressed up like Pizza delivery people. Who are you? Oh, yeah, sorry. Let me... <laughs> Why are you guys dressed like pizza delivery people? That is not our biggest problem right now. We were throwing a pizza party. What's it to you? Okay. Um... We got to get out of here fast. Uh, how do you think we should get Oberon out? Where is... Oh, Oberon. You want to punch oh, the glass? No. How strong yeah, can, is he? Do you have like robo strength? Or uh, lasers? Lasers. Or acid. Yeah. Can you I, just read I us don't... your character sheet real fast? 
You guys have a lot more questions. Actually, you know what? This is pretty on par for the amount of questions you typically have. <laughs> um, it's annoying. I am going to just give you a quick rundown on me. Yes, I have bionic arm. Yes, I have metal pieces of my face. They haven't given me any extra powers because I was a fugitive fighting in a bunker for like a month. And we didn't exactly have access to Laser Man and his wonderful suite of technology. Mm. So, uh, no special powers here, but I do have some pretty good punching ability. Sorry, Quest. Uh, you know what? Actually, I'm not sorry. What kind of person slaps somebody to wake them up? You're a dick. Yeah, exactly. Don't apologize. I've been saying that this whole time. I'm going to go run to the to the tank and I'm going to start feeling the surface and I'm going to kind of give it an exploratory like uh, punch. Not, not full strength, but like enough to see how solid it feels. Uh, okay. Uh, go ahead and roll... I guess notice and fighting and then okay. tell me which one is lower. Okay. Uh, let's see. Notice more fighting. Okay. That's a four for notice. Okay. Um, you managed to punch the glass and uh, you notice that it sort of resonates at a certain note like a really low note you probably wouldn't be able to hear it if it weren't for your cybernetic implants in your head um, but you can you can hear the really low resonant frequency of this glass okay it does seem very solid sketch your voice is changing how low can you sing uh I can go like this. Uh, Not low enough. Quest? Mm. You want my lowest note? Yes. Uh, Not low enough. Damn. Sienna? No. <laughs> Just no. <laughs> All right. Uh, we need to improvise like a bow. Like a violin bow. Uh, is there any, like, fabric or... I've got some nylon rope. Like, oh, that yeah, that might work. And then we need something sticky to, like, rosin it. I, I have some mozzarella cheese on this knife. <laughs> that will not work. Oh. Um, I'll, are there any, are there any, like chemical looking things around like maybe some 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 sort of glue agent or something that we could use to create yeah kind of yeah definitely surface okay. yeah there's all kinds of different i mean you're basically in like a weird kind of workshop lab space they've got all kinds of stuff okay with with a little bit of rummaging around you're able to find a few different sticky substances uh rubber cement uh super glue uh duct tape uh chewing gum i'm gonna go with super glue because it dries to kind of a plasticky surface that should vibrate it's not completely smooth but it's also not so um rough that it would be abrasive mm. and then i'm going to turn to the group and i'm going to say this is a trick that i used to break into a bank vault back in the good old days we're oh. going to use this nylon rope and this super glue to vibrate the glass hopefully hard enough to shatter it this feels badass kind of convoluted I, I mean yeah badass that's what i was gonna yeah all right uh, ever, uh let's see Sketch, you're on my end. Sienna, you're with Quest. Back and forth, let's go. So you guys are rubbing the nylon rope that's treated with super glue across the corner of this glass cube? <laughs> yes. This is okay. the dumbest, probably the dumbest thing that I could have come up with. I didn't stop to think about it, but yes, this is stupid. 
Uh, I want everybody to roll uh, strength. Strength? Strength. Mm. Roll for strength and... Strength suit. Health and strength. I'm going to use a Benny. It's an 11 on strength for me. 11 for me, too. Three. Four. <laughs> okay. It's actually fairly balanced. Like, yeah, at least uh, we're yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you guys uh, have managed to, in a balanced way, um, you know, pull back and forth, and the glass cube begins to hum louder and louder, and you can see the sides of it bowing in and out, uh, you know, at, at, at a bigger and bigger frequency. Oberon inside uh, looks very concerned and is like holding his hands to his ears. Um, apparently, the sound is quite loud inside the water. Yeah, that sounds like that would suck. Uh, are you going to keep going or are you going to stop? I will stop. I don't want to hurt my dad. Uh, so there's been some off-screen character development then. Oberon motions yeah. to do it again. He's, he he seems to think that it's going to work. He just want he just uh, you know seems like it hurts, but he seems like he thinks it it's the best thing to do. If you're sure. Okay, guys, I, I guess do it again and don't look at my dad's painful face. No empathy. Done. All right. Deanna's like, that's my strong suit. <laughs> <laughs> now we're talking. Do we have to roll again? Nope. Um, this okay. time you keep going and, uh, and the cube shatters and uh, Oberon flows out onto the floor with the with the glass. The glass luckily has shattered in a safe way. It apparently had a fairly high copper content because it's shattered into like the you know how auto glass like shatters into those little cubes. cubes? Yeah. yeah. That's that's kind of what it's like. That's cool. And all the water comes gushing out and Oberon flows out onto the floor. Uh he runs over well he kind of picks himself up shakes himself to like get back into it and uh goes over to where they were keeping uh Misha's and Oberon's possessions in a little lockbox um he says hey could you uh could you hand me that it's not a fire extinguisher it's a fire extinguisher standard Uh, yeah. Thing. Nice to see you too. I hand it to him. Yeah, thanks for getting me out, by the way. I was uh, surprised to see you here. I don't know how you guys figured out I was here. We looked in every room. In the like city. Like every room in the whole city, and this was the last one you got to? <laughs> there were like three yes. more. It could have been worse. <laughs> you know, things wow, are that's... always in the last place you look. You're you're right there. So we need to go right now. Oh right, okay. He he uh, slams the the fire extinguisher standard against the locked box where they've where the where Oberon's and Misha's possessions are, and uh, the lock smashes right off, and he's able to open it up, and there's all their stuff. They grab their stuff, and uh, time to run. Okay. I'm assuming that means I have my pistol back. Yeah. All right. Um, so, so, can you describe the 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 pistol and stuff and like oh, other yeah. stuff about Misha now that like you guys are running out? Uh, you know, you've kind of gotten to the part where you're basically going to run out, run past the. Uh, the camera that has pizza smashed all over the front of it and go back to the safe house motel. Um, but uh, I want to know more about 
you know, what you have with Misha as far as like skills and equipment and, you know, other stuff that the party would notice. Okay. Yeah. So, um, let me start with the appearance and then I'll get on to, to some of the less apparent stuff. So obviously cybernetics, I've got a robotic left arm that is attached kind of halfway through my left collarbone. Um, part of my face is metal plating and that includes the kind of the left side of my head up to the ear and, and, you know, around the eye, but the eye is still, um, you know, my, my biological eye. I'm wearing kind of a ripped, shot up, burned brown tunic. Uh, and that leads into the hindrance. I have the hindrance ugly, minor, so I'm, I'm pretty beat up looking. I don't have fancy cybernetics. I mean, compared to our out of game technology, it's fancy stuff, but in the world of Edenia, it's it's not it's not the high dollar um sleek looking equipment. It's it's all kind of chunky, kind of it doesn't sit flush with the skin around it like I I'm I'm battle scarred would be a polite way to say that. So I have the ugly hindrance um my other hindrances are ruthless, wanted, and vengeful. And I don't think any of those will really come as a surprise given Misha's prior behavior. Um, but that's who we're dealing with. Um, and as we leave the building, Misha's actually got her her pistol, which is a it's kind of a it's a Russian pistol called a Makarov. Um, it's made of ivory and it's it, it's pretty fancy. It's obvious that this is something she spent some of her uh, sunrise money on after uh, selling the quantum AI, and and she's she's attached the suppressor and is actively looking for a photoned personnel to shoot at as you kind of shepherd her out of the building. Um, she's going to take any any opportunity she can to. Um, attack and destroy photoned wherever she finds it. That's her main uh, vengeance target. In terms of other kind of skills and abilities, pretty standard, but Misha has an emphasis on uh, melee combat. So I've got the martial artist edge. I've got the dodge edge. Um, the acrobat and combat acrobat edges, which make me... Uh, able to reroll athletics and to dodge and stuff like that. And I have the menacing edge as well, um, which kind of plays into my ruthless and ugly hindrances. Awesome. Thanks for, uh, thanks for putting that together, Jared. Um, yeah. You guys don't have any more trouble as you come back from, uh, from Photonid, you get another taxi, um, well, a couple of taxis, but neither of them is Greenbeard Bill, so there's not a whole lot to be narrated there. <laughs> they do think it's weird that pizza delivery people are taking taxis places, but who's going to ask you questions in this city? You make it back to the Safe House Motel, and Jerry looks kind of uh, suspiciously at Oberon and Misha. Oberon's been here before, um, but left in quite a hurry the last time. And Misha hasn't been here before, but she does have, uh, well, kind of a menacing look. And Jerry, Jerry's like, uh, are, are you sure you want to bring her in here? Yes, Jerry, get over it. Goodness. I, I just, I'm concerned about your safety. That's all. It just, it wouldn't be a very good look to have a place like the Safe House Motel not be a very safe place. Well, it's not a good look to have the sign out front flickering and broken, but here we are. <laughs> Get him sketched. It's a sick burn. 
No, that, that was a that was a stylistic choice based on the kind of clientele that I'm looking to 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 have. Obviously, it worked because you guys are good paying customers. I have no response to that. That's a really good point. Anyways, here's my credit card. Can I use this for whatever I want? Uh, no, it's to pay <laughs> Actually, you for the room. This one's on me, guys. And Misha's going to produce an RFID style fob and pass it to Jerry. Um, and she says, anything for our room goes on this fob. I'd like champagne. Thank you. Sounds good. Two champagnes coming right up. So I, I, in hindsight, I should have added rich to my edges because I'm rich from selling the yeah. AI. You've got that. You've got that uh, sunrise. Got that money. Papa Bellingham money. So basically, going forward, any any expense for the hotel is paid. Okay. So we can stop uh, keep taking really careful track of like that, like we have been. Yeah, <laughs> I assumed my dad was paying for it anyway. So such careful <laughs> control of your money. Um, you guys settle in for a well-deserved rest uh, at the Safe House Motel. Um, Jerry has beefed up his security somewhat. You've noticed that uh, there are now. Uh, things to prevent for example laser man and the dog from entering in the premises without his permission <laughs> finally um, <That's> good. <laughs> and other such intrusions uh into the safe house motel space um he's got security measures from many different corporations and some things that you guys don't recognize as being from any of the corporations uh but all in all, the safe house motel looks to be becoming a very safe place to stay. A fine establishment, nice. indeed. Well, you know, you just, you got to do what you got to do. When the city's in chaos, people need a safe place to stay. That's very astute, Jerry. I thought you were going to say something like Batman for a second there. Yeah. <laughs> when the, when <laughs> the city's you... in chaos. When the city isn't safe. When the city isn't <laughs> safe, I'm there to start a business and make a profit off of the people who need to be helped. <laughs> it's me, Jerry. You wouldn't, like, sow chaos in the city to drive demand for your services, would you? Oh, never, never. No, 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 I would never, no. <laughs> that was a lot more believable Jerry, 12 knows ago. We got to work on your lying skills there, friend. That's Make lying. I would never lie. No, 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 oh no, goodness. no. I would never. Okay. Just don't be so enthusiastic about it, okay? Just okay, one okay, no I'll... will suffice. You think one no is enough to convince people these days? Yes. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> it's not. I'm leaving. <laughs> uh, you guys get back to your room. The champagne's already there in a uh, in a champagne cooler tub. I don't even know what those are called. An ice bucket. Ice bucket. An ice bucket. <laughs> there's a bit, yes. there's another name for it, like a champagne bath. Yeah, or there's some like dumb French name, but uh, in any case, it's already there in your room, uh, and. It looks like the room has been cleaned, but all of your possessions that you left there are still there. And uh, you guys get a well-earned evening of rest. As you wind down, your thoughts turn to the complicated situations that you've been through today and the wild and crazy turns that your story has taken until now. And each of the characters in the party is pondering on what to do next and where they stand with the other people in this motel room. In addition, the weight of the death of Janet is uh, still on you guys and uh, is, is causing you some serious thought about the profession that you're in. As Misha walks in and sees Mrs. Bellingham, 
presumably still asleep in the bed. She turns to the party and says, Who's this? And where's Janet? Um, that's my mom. And Janet is, um, gone. Janet's gone. She got smashed by a giant robot in our attempts to rescue you. Oh, 